<laughs> Look, hedgehogs. Valentine's Day card. How cute, how did they know? I used to feed Martha and Melvin out my back garden. <laughs> I swear, how did they know? I love it. Hi Mick, thought this card Stephanie found would bring a smile to your face. Miss seeing you, my friend. Take care, love, Don. So, Don's my father's cousin, and he lives in America. This, it even smells of America, you know? It's so exotic. It's just so far away. And Don and my dad were cousins all their lives and best friends, and Stephanie as well. Stephanie is his wife. She says, we've so many special memories of our visits with you. What fun times, so much laughter. You're in our thoughts daily, sending hugs and all our love, Stephanie. You see, doctor, it's been eight months since my dad had his catastrophic life-changing stroke. I don't know how to process the news that you've given me. You see, my dad, it was an ordinary day back in February 26, 2020. I was going about my daily business, so was he, he was driving, he was as fit and healthy as you are, six foot tall, gorgeous. Had lunch with friends, waved to my friends who were having yoga on the Malahai Coast Road, and then all of a sudden, bang. Our whole lives changed. I was in work, I had deadlines, I didn't know what was happening, and I got that phone call, you know? Dad pops up on your mobile, and you're like, oh, it's Dad, and he's as chatty as I am. And I was about to say, hey, listen, I'm busy, don't, you know, don't speak to me. And it wasn't him on the phone. It was his colleague. And he said, I'm here with your dad. He's breathing, but he's not speaking. You gotta come quick. So I dropped everything and I drove 100 miles an hour. And I got there and the first responders were there, but the, the ambulance weren't there. They were an hour and a fucking half late. I wrote letters, I tried, I didn't know what to do. He was in full stroke arrest, doctor. I mean, I, I did everything I could. I kept saying, what have you done to yourself? It's like we're lost forever. He's there on the floor and he's, he's trying to breathe. And it has been eight months. And I know you've done everything you can, but the news I can't process. So what you're telling me is that he, my dad, who's that perfect orator, who knows everything about the 60s counterculture, who have I have held his hand for the last eight months and I have sang Bob Dylan songs to him, Tom Petty songs, the Beatles, the Stones, you fucking name it, he's never gonna talk again? How is that possible? It just can't be. I'm not okay. Why? Why has this happened to him? Why has it happened to us? What does a brain bleed mean? Why can't he move anymore? He can't even fucking eat at the moment. So you're telling me this gorgeous man who has called me the biggest and brightest star in the firmament, I will never speak to him again? He can't wish me happy Valentine's Day? Doctor, I can't. I just can't cope with this. Why? I'm so mad I could fucking scream or punch someone! <laughs> I just... I don't understand. Life is so cruel. Please help me understand. He is lost forever. And I don't know how to get him back. And no rehabilitation is going to make a difference. Nothing anybody does is going to make a difference. So the man I knew in 2020 is now gone. I'm left all alone. He used to say to me that time is the master thief. And now I know that's true. I know you've tried everything, doctor. I just can't believe it. I won't believe it. There's no humanity left. He's a shell of a man. I don't know what's right anymore, you know? But thank you. And thank you for listening to me. I just know that he said the right thing when he said that God did the right thing by making 
me his daughter, and I know God did the right thing by making him my father. And, uh, you know, my heart is his heart. Thanks for listening, Doctor.